Dear students, after studying this module, you shall be able to know about the significance of Neutron Activation Analysis, which is abbreviated as NAA. You shall also be knowing about the principle and functioning of Neutron Activation Analysis and the forensic application of Neutron Activation Analysis. Activation analysis has in a few decades become one of the most important methods for determination of minor, trace and ultra trace elements in solid samples. The main advantages of activation analysis are its accuracy and sensitivity. Moreover, it is an independent method that is not subject to the same systematic errors as others more commonly used analytical methods. The method is applied in the semiconductor industry, medicine, biology, criminology, archaeology, geochemistry and environmental studies or quality control. Neutron activation analysis or NAA as it is called is a sensitive analytical technique used for qualitative and quantitative multi-element analysis of major, minor and trace elements in the samples. Neutron activation analysis offers sensitivities that are far superior to attain by other methods on the order of parts per billion or even better. The application of neutron activation analysis is so widespread that approximately 1 lakh samples undergo analysis each year. NAA is significantly different from other spectroscopic analytical methods or techniques in that it is based on nuclear transitions instead of electronic transitions. Neutron activation analysis was discovered in 1936 by Hevesse and Levi when they observed that samples containing certain rare earth elements became highly radioactive when they were exposed to a source of neutrons. Thus, they recognized the potential of employing nuclear reactions on samples measurement and measurement of the induced radioactivity to facilitate both qualitative and quantitative identification of the elements present in the samples. Neutron activation analysis is a nuclear process used for detecting the presence and determination of the concentration with great sensitivity of most chemical elements without destructing or destroying the same sample to be analyzed. It allows discrete sampling of elements as it does not consider the chemical form of a sample but focuses completely on its nucleus. It permits identification and measurement of the concentration of elements which are present in only minute or trace quantities of concentration less than 0.01% such as scraps of paint which because of their size are not susceptible to other techniques. Under appropriate circumstances, NAA can also identify both large and small pieces of material by precisely analyzing their trace element concentrations. Such identifications rely on the fact that although concentrations of the major constituents of similar specimens such as two pieces of glass may be nearly the same, sometimes trace elements as impurity show a wide variation from one source to another. Now, what is the underlying principle of neutron activation analysis? Let us focus our attention on that students. The principle of neutron activation analysis is that a particle such as neutron, proton, alpha particle, etc. or a photon like gamma rays, bremsstrahlung that is radiation from accelerated particles induces a nuclear reaction in an atom of the target element. Then the product is detected and quantified by photon or particle emission or if radioactive then by its decay properties. 
The method being based on neutron activation and thus requires a neutron source. To carry out a neutron activation analysis, the specimen is placed into a suitable irradiation facility and neutrons are bombarded onto the sample, allowing the elements to form isotopes. After the irradiation has been taken place, the artificial radioisotopes decay with emission of particles or gamma radiation, which are main characteristics of the element from which they are emitted. The gamma radiation or the radioactive emissions in general and radioactive decay paths for each element are known allowing to study the spectra of the emissions of that particular radioactive sample and to determine the concentration of the elements within it. Now let us concentrate on the advantages of neutron activation analysis after having discussed its underlying principle. Now students the major advantages of NAA particularly instrumental NAA are first of all the relative freedom from matrix effects and interferences, second is the high accuracy, third is the very low or zero blank contributions. Since nuclear reactions and decay processes are virtually unaffected by the chemical and physical structure of the material during and after irradiation, the metric composition has almost negligible effect on the induced activity. Biological materials have low neutron absorption cross sections unless concentrations of elements such as cadmium and boron are present. Thus, neutron reduction in such sample during radiation is very small and can be corrected if present. The gamma ray attenuation during counting of the small volume irradiated biological samples in in vitro analysis is also small except at energies below 100 keV and can be corrected for the case of low energy gamma rays or large sample volumes for example in vivo neutron activation analysis. The absence of matrix composition effects thus allows using standards that have different composition and even physical state from that of the sample. Interferences may arise through production of the radionuclide via fast neutron reactions on other elements or from coincident gamma rays during the counting process. Sample pretreatment uh, pre is minimal in RNAA and INAA and involves only packaging the sample in an irradiation container that is quartz polyethylene or aluminium foil. For ultra trace analysis, this is an important advantage over other techniques like atomic absorption spectrometry or ICP that is induced coupled plasma technique in which the sample must be in solution thus potentially introducing contamination from reagents and equipment that is a blank problem and the loss of analyte through absorption, volatilization co-precipitation etc. After adding non-radioactive carriers to the radionuclide tagged sample post irradiation can be done in RNAA techniques eliminating blank contributions and chemical yield determination of the separation process. That is to evaluate losses during the decomposition or in separation. Now we talk about the application of neutron activation analysis students. What are the application and in the industry as well as in the forensic science of the neutron activation analysis. Neutron activation analysis measures the total amount of an element even in extremely low concentration that is even in parts per trillion or lower in a material without regard to chemical or the physical form. Samples analyzed can be liquids or solids and do not have to be put in a solution form as in other techniques like AAS and ICP as discussed earlier. Theoretically, every element can be neutron activated, yet some conditions are always required. First, 
the element must have an isotope with a high cross section that is able to fix the incoming neutrons. Second condition, if delayed NAA is used, the half-life of the isotope has to be long enough so the amount of activity is measurable. Third, the isotope itself must be relatively easy to get in sizable quantities. Lastly, gamma rays must be produced that are reasonably intense and in a limited energy range. Applications of NAA includes environmental studies to characterize pollutants, semiconductor material analysis to measure ultra trace element impurities, archaeological studies of the distribution of the chemical elements and fossil materials, forensic studies as a non-destructive method for the suspect chemical agents, pharmaceutical material analysis to measure ultra trace element impurities etc. Unfortunately, facilities for using this method do not exist everywhere. So this is a major shortcoming. Now we shall study the forensic significance aspect of the neutron activation analysis now students. Neutron activation analysis is used and is applied in many fields. Now we shall be mainly concentrating on this aspect of the neutron activation analysis on the forensic significance aspect. So first is evaluating the evidence. The result of subjecting of a piece of material to neutron activation analysis is that the material is found to contain certain elements in the measured concentrations within experimental error. The next step is to determine the relevance of the result in solving legal issues. Sometimes the legal issue depends directly on the amount of a selected element in the material. For example, if the question is whether a particular death was due to arsenic poisoning, the activation analyst might measure the amount of arsenic in the victim's hair or in other tissues. And if the amount exceeds the normal amount by a considerable value, then death by arsenic poisoning has a high probability. In other cases, the legal issue is whether a given piece of evidence came from a particular source that is the identification problem. For example, a hair found on the body of a victim might be compared in its trace element concentrations to the hair of the suspect. Then the crucial question is the degree to which the comparison singles out the suspect as the guilty party. In neither of these cases is the neutron activation analysis evidence sufficient in itself. Additional data is definitely needed to evaluate the significance of the chemical analysis done by neutron activation techniques. In the first case, it is noteworthy to note that it is necessary to know the normal amount of arsenic in the tissue or hair measured. Knowledge of the distribution of arsenic concentration in the hair of the living general population is required so that one can calculate the probability that a person chosen at random would have an arsenic concentration equal to what was measured in the tissue or hair of the diseased person. However, in the second case, more information is needed to determine how much more likely the hair found on the victim is of the suspect than from a person chosen at random from the general population. Although the detailed considerations are different in the different type of cases, the analysis in each case depends on the existence of sufficient background information with which the evidence at hand could be compared. Only then the evidence can be interpreted properly. Now we will discuss the complications of identification. A criminal often leaves some materials in the area of a crime, such as a shirt button or a hair from his head or any other part of his body or he may carry away something from the vicinity of the crime scene, such as hair of the victim or a piece of the glass from a window broken in the case of burglary. 
Although all hair, for example, show similarity in the major constituents, there is great variation in the minor constituents from one person to another because of differences in diet, body metabolism, occupation and environment. Because of this great sensitivity of the activation analysis, the question arises whether materials can be unambiguously characterized by their trace element concentrations. If it could be shown, for example, that every hair on a person's head was identical to every other one and that they were all different from the hair on a different person's head. The procedure would provide an extremely powerful method of identification. Now students, let us discuss about the revelation of gunshot residues or the GSR. NAA technique is used for the revealing of mineral gunshot residues. These indicial traces after being picked up from the crime scene are used as material proofs for judicial investigations. Samples of metallic powder residue can be realized after several shots by different kind of weapons with local and foreign ammunitions. Now students, after having discussed very many aspects of neutron activation analysis, I would like to summarize this module for you. In this module, we have learned that neutron activation analysis or abbreviated by NAA is a sensitive analytical technique used for qualitative and quantitative multi-element analysis of major, minor, trace and even ultra trace elements in the samples. NAA offers sensitivities that are far superior to attain by other methods. On the order of parts per billion or even parts per trillion for many elements and applications. The detection of elements by neutron activation analysis is possible because most of the elements can be made artificially radioactive. The radioactive products are identified by observing the ways of radioactive decay. Practically, most samples are activated by insertion inside a nuclear reactor. They are then exposed to a steady stream of neutrons and some nuclei of each stable element present in the sample become radioactive on absorbing a particular neutron. The basic things required to perform an analysis of the sample by the process of neutron activation analysis includes a source of neutrons, appropriate instrumentation for gamma rays detection and a vast knowledge of the reactions occurring during the interaction of neutrons with the target nuclei. Neutron activation analysis technique is used for revealing min mineral gunshot residues also. These indicial traces after being picked up from the crime scene are used as material proofs for judicial investigations also. Now I hope students with all this information on neutron activation analysis, you must have found this module very very interesting.